My name is Dr Jodie Rowley and I'm here to talk to you about the National Citizen Science Project Frog ID and how people have definitely come to the rescue across Australia in terms of frog conservation. But I'm going to start around the why, the why we created Frog ID. So Australia has 243 native species of frog that we know of at the moment and that's because Crazily in Australia, we don't yet know how many species of frog we have. So these couple of species that just got added a couple in the last five years, and there are many more species of frog still yet to scientifically name in Australia. So we don't even know how many species of frog we have in Australia. And at the same time, we have a really, really poor track record in terms of frog conservation in Australia. And in fact, globally, frogs are in a lot of trouble. In Australia, we have already lost at least four species of frog and many others are feared uh, that they're extinct, so they're missing as well. Uh, and about three dozen species are kind of perched on the edge of extinction, so they're considered threatened. But why should we care? Why should we care if we lose these frogs? Well, there are a number of reasons. So firstly, frogs, even though they're small, they're usually a really large part of the biomass of healthy ecosystems. So anything that affects the frogs has huge consequences for the whole ecosystem. They're also a really important part of both aquatic, because they have tadpoles, and terrestrial environments, because typically the adults live on land. So they connect these two habitats uh, and are really important in energy flows and nutrient dynamics. They're a key part of the food web. Uh, tadpoles eat a lot of algae and help keep streams clear. Frogs eat a lot of invertebrates, including pest species, and they're eaten by a whole array of other animals. So when they disappear, it kind of cascades around with significant changes. There are some selfish reasons as well that we should want frogs. For example, uh, each species of frog has a chemical cocktail on its skin and it's used to stop them from getting infected by things. But now we're using frog chemicals to explore in human medicine. So, for example, to be used as antifungals, antivirals, uh, all sorts of things that might end up saving ourselves. So every time we lose a frog species, we lose this potential benefit to ourselves. And frogs are also typically great bioindicators. So not all species, but most species are very sensitive to any kind of environmental change. So by monitoring the health of frogs, we're also monitoring the health of our ecosystems, which is very handy. Because frogs are so important and because we need to conserve them, we, we desperately need to act. But there's a couple of big obstacles in the way of frog conservation. So as frog ID was thought of, these Two obstacles that we hope to address were one, the lack of data on frogs. So we don't know where they are. Uh, we don't know how they're doing. So there's huge parts of Australia with absolutely no records of frogs. So we desperately need to get more information. And there's not that many frog biologists. So it was clear we needed everybody's help. And the second thing uh, that we were trying to address was sort of the lack of involvement, awareness and participation in frog conservation in Australia. And so in 2017, Frog ID was launched and it's based around two things. So one, frogs call. They call to attract a mate and just like birds, each species has a different call. So you don't have to get in there, you don't have to see the frog. Uh, just by recording the call, you can actually put a frog on the map and help us understand where they are. The other thing is that everybody has an amazing piece of technology or almost everyone in their back pockets that can be used to gather this information. And the Frog ID app, which is for Android and iOS was, was created uh, to actually make it as easy as possible. So all you have to do is press record for 20 to 60 seconds and capture that audio. And basically everything else is automatic, the latitude, longitude, geo accuracy uh, and timestamp. Um, and you can add photos and, and tell us a little bit more as well but it's very automatic um, and that's always been an obstacle for me and in some citizen science projects when I don't know what anything is so each audio recording is submitted with that metadata into the frog id project and every recording is listened to by one or more experts based at the Australian Museum and identified to species and you'll get notified uh, of what you found so it's expert validated biodiversity data on Australia's frogs and the phone makes it simple so how have we gone? In almost four years, how has Frog ID gone? It's kind of remarkable. 
So in less than four years, and these are the stats when I'm recording the talk, so there'll be more by the time you're seeing this, we've had over, over 24,000 people actually submit audio recordings to the Frog ID project. Hundreds of thousands of people have the app and use it as a field guide, uh, which is fantastic, but uh, we've got a huge amount of people actually participating as citizen scientists as well. We've had 267,000 submissions resulting in 423,000 records of frogs across Australia, which is remarkable. And there's 204 species so far uh, of Australia's frogs, so we've still got some to get. Uh, and this is absolutely enormous. So uh, it's, it's about 75% of all other frog records in Australia. Uh, and so we really are making a significant contribution to our understanding of how Australia's frogs are doing, where they are, how they're distributed. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the things that people across Australia are helping discover. Uh, frog ID is growing. Uh, and so even though Frog ID is very seasonal, particularly along Eastern Australia, we're getting uh, we get sort of the most frogs calling around about now in spring uh, and summer and after rain. Uh, we are amazed at, at how well Frog ID is doing and helping us gather the information that we need to inform frogs. Now, in getting this project up, we never thought uh, about one of the most important things that Frog ID has now, uh, I guess, delivered on, and that is helping understand the impact of events such as the 2019 and 20 bushfires. So we, we knew that it would be important in understanding the impacts of climate change, but we didn't know that we would have such a huge event right away. Um, and so at that time as well, uh, frog biologists were in lockdown, coronavirus just hit, and so when the frogs started to call after the bushfires, after it started to rain, the only people out there were citizen scientists armed with the Frog ID app and they recorded hundreds and thousands of frogs across the fire front helping us get an amazing snapshot of how resilient fantastically frogs were to this fire. So we published a paper shortly after these fires thanks to everybody out there with Frog ID and it was one of the first papers out there um, and potentially the first paper with data that was showing the short-term widespread persistence of Australia's frogs across the fire front. And um, those little red dots are, are frogs that were recorded um, in the fire front across burnt areas in Australia. We've also had a really big focus on the impacts of land use change on frogs and how in particular our urban and modified habitats are affecting frog diversity. Uh, and Gracie Liu presented on some of this earlier in the conference, but essentially showing the potentially detrimental impact that habitat modification is having on Australia's frogs, but also pointing to some of the things that we can do to make our urban or modified areas more frog friendly and help support, support our frogs. We've unfortunately revealed disappearing frogs uh, thanks to Frog ID, but it's really important to target the things that, that we need to hopefully rectify. Uh, and so, for example, the green tree frog, the good old big Aussie green tree frog used to be really common uh, throughout Sydney, you know, Bondi, uh, Manly, Mossman, all over the place. Uh, and now it's almost completely absent from Sydney. So it's hanging on in the outskirts. So we've been able to identify uh, areas um, and, and species that, that are in trouble. Frog ID has also been really vital in understanding how the cane toad is tracking and also detecting cane toads when they've been accidentally introduced outside the range that they're kind of moving themselves. So a really great biosecurity tool. And not only are we obviously monitoring for the cane toad, uh, but we're also monitoring for other species that have been detected as sort of accidentally imported into Australia. So things like the black spine toad. Uh, so Frog ID plays a really big role in, in biosecurity as well. Frog ID is helping species discovery. So a recently described or um, recognised frog in Australia, so Spalding's rocket frog, uh, there were very few recordings of the audio of this frog. So Frog ID recordings were incorporated into the description um, of this uh, very pointy rocket frog from Northern Australia just recently. And one of the key 
focuses of Frog ID and something that we've been really, really passionate about is been trying to get scientific publications using Frog ID data out there. Um, so we want Frog ID to inform conservation. We want citizen science data as well to be recognised as being incredibly useful for frog conservation and for conservation and, and all sorts of other things in general. Um, and so, so far we've published nine scientific papers uh, using the Frog ID data. That's just that's sort of the, the Frog ID team leading that. There are other papers out there that are using Frog ID data and increasingly we hope to have many, many more publications as a result of Frog ID. And most of the publications are thanks to the amazing group of students that are working either exclusively on Frog ID data um, or incorporating Frog ID data into part of their PhDs or honours projects. So we're very lucky uh, to have such an amazing team. Frog ID is being integrated into research and conservation, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and so conservation research across Australia is using Frog ID as a tool to help collect the data that they need, or they're requesting Frog ID data for uh, their whatever projects that they're actually working on. Um, it's been integrated into state and territory wildlife atlases, so as well as the Atlas of Living Australia. So every year we go through a data cleaning process and export that data. Uh, it's been integrated into conservation management, so the New South Wales survey guidelines for threatened frogs actually recommend using the Frog ID app, which is fantastic, so BAM assessments. And federal conservation assess assessments now are often recommending the use of Frog ID in their sort of actions, which is fantastic. I guess the most important thing though with Frog ID, while I, you know, being the lead scientist, super, I'm, you know, data, it's amazing. That's exactly what we need to help inform conservation. Increasingly over the project, I've realized that potentially the most important part of Frog ID has been all of the people, uh, not just the data that they've created, but the connection that people across Australia have had with frogs. And I'd like to read you some statements that we've had submitted to Frog ID, which uh, I think really epitomize the power of the Frog ID project and citizen science in general. So for example, three months ago, I knew nothing about frogs and now it's all I see in here. Secondly, the health of my waterways through the property is important. The project keeps me in touch with which species are around and can be telling as to what is happening to my water health. Within a very short space of time, our frog knowledge and awareness has expanded. And recently, very late one evening, after being on the road for 11 hours, we passed through a shower of rain. We didn't think twice of pulling the car off the highway to listen to frogs. Our life has become far richer. You did that. And... It makes us feel like we really can make a difference at a local level. So it can be incredibly depressing being a conservation biologist, being a frog biologist at uh, this time uh, in the world. But one of the things that Frog ID has taught me is that we're not alone that there are hundreds and thousands of people out there across Australia that are willing to stand in a swamp, getting bitten by mosquitoes in the rain and record frog calls. And it's given me hope because there are an army of people across Australia that care and we're working together uh, for frog conservation. Thank you.